Okay. Thank you very much. Well, by my presentation, as uh, our friend uh, have told, having connection with the objectives of, of a central bank dealing with uh, capital flows in an environment of, of crisis. So let me move on uh, on the presentation. Well, we are going to, to talk about the state of art of financial regulation. Um, thus, it's important to take notice on how global economy functions, from which we can see some factors. First of all, well, the financial liberalization, the accumulation of macroeconomic disequilibria, the technological change, sophistications, uh, regulatory arbitrage, and, and that's in last decades have important effects, like less growth in connection with uh, previous decades, more economic concentration, more inequality, high volatility and global fragility. And that's in connection with malfunction of financial world uh, in connection with market imperfections and financial inconsistencies, uh, in connection with the regulation that allows high level of leverage, but incentives, asymmetric information, uh, prosicality, hard behavior, that have uh, that in connection of the moral hazard issue, uh, very uh, important impacts in terms of uh, bubbles and crisis and social socialization of laws uh, uh, in the VR's uh, part of the cycle that have very important effects in economic um, uh, world. Well, we can allow, and only I, I, I have the titles of different issues or structures uh, uh, in connection with this uh, mis, uh, architecture of financial international system, like the existence of offshore centers, uh, the uh, capital flows that moves freely uh, across our boundaries, the all of travels in connection with rating agencies, uh, the existence of financial conglomerates that uh, go through that uh, regulatory arbitrage and have important effects uh, in macroprudential uh, issues, uh, transparency and uh, consumer and protection. Well, and the issue of the governance of financial institutions in connection with democracy, access to financing, the conditionalities of lending, and so on. Let me move to a very important issue about uh, the emergency of the world economic financiarization. If we move to 19080, we can see that for each one dollar of GDP, there will be one dollar of financial assets. If we go in advance uh, more than 25 years more before the crisis of, of 08, 09, we see that the relation between financial assets and real economy is more than 14 times. And after the crisis, the uh, explosion of the bubble, we can see that nothing happens. Practically, the bubble begins again and again, and now is the situation that we have to deal with that. Uh, well, what was the another side of that imperfections, misarchitecture? Well, the issue that uh, world debt reached maximums before the Second World War II, uh, particularly in advanced economies, but 
important uh, rate also in emerging markets as well. And you can close uh, that general picture with all the existence of scandals, financial scandals, uh, or misconducts in financial system that in a very limited way was sanctioned or, or penalized worldwide. And this is in connection with the, the kind of the regulation of the financial system. Uh, well, going back to the present, not in, in the perspective of uh, the evolution of financialization uh, in capitalism, we can see uh, three or four issues to the, in particular one, we are in a path of transition econ e e hegemony that there are the consolidation of two blocks in connection with Western countries, with US and, and China, uh, and ever uh, hegemony transitions shows uh, a period of great instability, for example, between uh, UK and US, and also uh, uh, in past centuries also. Well, another important issue is the emergency of high protectionism in, um, de in developed countries. Uh, we can see, for example, higher how in different sectors agriculture from left to right agriculture excuse me the spanish of the axis minerals food uh, industrial products uh, metal uh, and electronic goods and services the higher emergency of number of measures of protectionist measures that developed country uh, do and with practically any penalization form, uh, YTO, the uh, <coughs> Commerce uh, World Organization. Well, going beyond in the context, we, we can see as another aspect uh, that I said in the previous slide, the emergence of uh, inflation that is record in last uh, 40 years worldwide with uh, multiplying for three in Europe, uh, US, uh, taking into consideration the <clears throat> underlying inflation, excluding food and energy. Obviously, cost of living is very more than three times uh, for citizens. Well, the vulnerability of emerging markets that it's in connection uh, with the interest rate uh, and the spread that uh, emerging markets have to pay to access to the market. And well, the impact that is divergent for, it, for each country, for obviously for uh, oil exporter countries is good news or for some uh, uh, grain and soybean uh, exporters also, uh, for the higher uh, growing of uh, food and energy, particularly uh, in uh, last year. Obviously, if we speak about bubbles, well, we have into consideration what is happening with digital economy and cryptocurrency and so on, and we return and come back uh, to the volatility we are uh, seeing financial volatility, commodity volatility, and oil price volatility, the higher uh, from uh, the beginning of the 80s. Uh, let me come back <coughs> uh, to uh, this slide and say that during last year, we can see the growing of local market debt in order that uh, emerging markets, particularly uh, in Asia, rather than other countries, can reduce the dependency of international financial markets. But in any case, 
uh, the uh, percentage of uh, funding of uh, public sector and private sector of emerging economy is less than a third uh, in uh, practically uh, every region. And if we include Brazil and Mexico, practically the, the same proportion, one third in other Latin American countries. In this context, we can say that financiarization and global crisis have two channels that impact in emerging economy. Uh, taking into account term of trades uh, in connection with market access of our exports are by financial contagion in connection with higher capital outflows uh, country risk and impact in currency, banking, and capital uh, system. And how is the evolution of uh, public sector regulation uh, uh, in, in our countries and particularly focusing in objectives of a central bank? Well, we all of us know that during the last uh, more than 20 years, uh, many countries moved to a unique, unique uh, mandate, the price stability or inflation mandate, like European Union, Norway, Australia, New Zealand, and other Latin American countries. Uh, only the case of North America, and particularly the US, uh, retains the original double mandate that it was generally widespread uh, worldwide uh, after uh, the Bretton Woods uh, uh, systems in the 40s. And there are few other countries that have another uh, objective, like financial stability, uh, growth or uh, any other target that exchange rate target. So, well, if you consider what was the evolution of central bank independence and who you need to discuss, independence from whom? From uh, the government, from markets, for whom? We can uh, remember that inflation tar targeting provokes a recessive bias in last decades than it was, as in the previous slide, shows that growth was slow in uh, last uh, 30 years than uh, from the golden age of 40 to 70s miscoordination with other bodies, no, in connection with independent <clears throat> monetary policy than other policies have coordination travels and, well, <clears throat> uh, lost in terms of GDP growth and equality, promotes bubbles and crises in connection with thus bias of central bank. So, well, it's clear for the, the state of start of regulation, in, instability, uh, less degrees of freedom that emerging markets have, that emerging markets need to have another target, multiple objectives, like the hegemon country, like the US, you know, that regulates or intends to regulate uh, simultaneously uh, employment, and inflation. No, let's consider a central banker of an emerging country that, well, fulfills uh, his mandate if uh, pulls up interest rates and uh, gets low inflation, but with uh, improving, <coughs> uh, pardon, increasing poverty uh, to, uh, well, unsustainability levels or sacrificing GDP. No, now it's uh, emphasizes in some mainstream economies the sacrifice that you we have to pay or uh, the world have to pay in terms of 
getting down inflation uh, in terms of employment, no? Well, that's uh, the situation. In the case of Argentina, well, in 2012, uh, it was modified the charter of the central bank, introducing multiple mandates. Five minutes, that's, please. That sets four objectives, monetary stability, financial stability, employment, and economic development with social inclusion. And well, but the issue is how to uh, get in practice that multiple mandates, how to deal with these goals. And well, we have to take into consideration all of us knows the problem with the, the Trinity, you know, how to conduct independent economic policy and uh, having some kind of objective in a foreign uh, in exchange rate uh, with capital mobility. Obviously, we have to choose uh, who is uh, the two uh, uh, issues to, to set and how is the variable uh, in this trinity. And it's critical uh, trying to have some con control of exchange rate, taking in consideration the magnitude of capital flows, the financial deregulation, the existence of offshores and financial conglomerates. Well, uh, how to, to deal with that with some kind of capital of controls in order to reduce volatility and have some degree of freedom to establish a monetary policy, a ex exchange policy with some kind of independence. But it's not important in, in consideration to deal with economic policies and in particularly with um, um, the exchange rate policy, taking into account the regulation as a whole, taking into account not only the central bank, than banking supervision and not banking supervision, no? And we can see that worldwide, there is some kind of division between the regulation of capital markets, the regulation of bank, insurance, pensions, in the case of countries that have private uh, uh, pension system schemes. And generally, uh, most of the country have separate regulators for each function. No? In the case of Argentina, also have separate the central bank regulating bank as SEC uh, regulating the stock exchange, dealer broker mutual funds, and a national bureau of insurance in connect with insurance companies. And um, well, that's an important point, no? The, we have different experience. For example, most known was the uh, FSA in UK that theoretically unifies uh, the financial supervisions, but having a unique financial supervisors that not implies that you have in the practice unique and integral supervision of the system. And FSA was, was split after the crisis because, well, do not uh, prevent or have uh, some kind of uh, coordination problems between the Treasury, the Bank of England, and uh, obviously the FSA to deal with that kind of uh, financial bubbles and coordination of regulation or supervision. There are a lot of black holes. Um, okay. Well, you have different situations. For example, in, in Uruguay, there is a whole uh, supervisor uh, in Central Bank and uh, inside the Central Bank. And there are, for example, the Australian Twin Peaks that 
separates the prudential issue for all banking and non-banking activities than uh, the uh, behavior regulation transparency for all across financial intermediaries. Well, let me know about what is happening in, in Argentina. Uh, I take five minutes to, to finish that. In terms of tell you about, uh, the, well, the dynamics, particularly the three years dynamic, as you know, uh, when uh, the actual administration took place, the situation was very, very difficult with high indebtedness, higher degree of dollarizations, uh, well, limits to, to financing, less fiscal room, a white currency deficit and an, an, an important FX gap, uh, and the situation of internal debt default and external practically quasi default, no? Well, the situation in 2020, uh, months later than uh, the new administration take place, where it impacts uh, pandemics, and it, it was uh, a very difficult situation in terms of uh, the combination of structural problems with the deterioration of uh, external sector. Uh, although uh, in, two, in 2020, uh, Argentina have reached a debt agreement uh, with uh, external creditors, but that situation do not open voluntary credit. So, <laughs> well, in uh, this year, uh, Argentina has to renegotiate the IMF agreement that it was established with a record amount in 2018 by the neoliberal matrix administration. Uh, and, and well, uh, the dynamic uh, of 2022, although uh, the uh, intent of fulfilling IMF goals was very difficult, in connection with the deterioration of uh, external sector and uh, increasing of currency gap. Let's say one of the reasons you see in the uh, green line, uh, the important increase of energy prices that Argentina is a net importer, that is very higher than uh, the price of uh, agriculture, grains, and uh, uh, other products that Argentina exports. But uh, the impact was very important in terms that if you consider the evolution of international reserves, that is the blue uh, bars, that it was practically zero during 2022, even though it was the seasonally high uh, period of sending uh, soybean in partic particularly in second quarter. Well, the uh, squeezing of uh, trade balance, which is the red uh, bar, and uh, the increasing, it was the dot. Alejandro, the, yeah. the time is over. Now, let me one minute to conclude, please. Uh, so we can say rapidly uh, the, the, the depreciation of exchange rate, the higher increase of X gap, uh, and uh, well, perspectives is uh, very difficult in terms of days ago, it was a new minister, uh, the situation is that uh, we uh, begin an orthodox and bias with monetary and fiscal uh, adjustment. We don't know uh, what will happen with exchange rate. And well, how to deal uh, the idea of have some kind of uh, attraction with markets with having some kind of social consensus. That is a, a very difficult deal with differences within uh, the ruling coalition 
and how to avoid the pendulum about neoliberalism, neoliberalism and progressive policies. Uh, I'm finished to say uh, and to remember that within IMF, we see two different situations that we have to deal. One is the case of the traditional ad adjustment uh, countries that uh, have a GDP loss, a increase of under um, unemployment, an increase of uh, GDP that was negative economic side. Have the experience of Portugal have a different strategy and prioritize growth and have an improvement in economic evolution, uh, decreasing in unemployment and reducing debt and deficit. So, well, uh, that's uh, the end of my presentations. In order to only emphasize that if we discuss or have to discuss fiscal adjustment, we can discuss, well, what kind of fiscal adjustment? Reducing expenses, reducing salaries, or uh, making tax reform and taxing more important wealth, like in Argentina last year, or in Spain, that uh, extraordinary rent. Well, the, all is the discussion it is necessary trying to deal with that uh, problems that uh, worldwide are leading and trying that social cost and sustainability in terms of politics economic and social uh, terms will be uh, sustainable in the long run. Thank you very much.